All right, the fault shares features with the Hayward Fault. The Hayward Fault. The Hayward Fault. The Hayward Fault. The USGS study imagines a 7.0 quake striking a 52-mile stretch of the Hayward Fault. California is living on a razor's edge. Beneath its bustling cities and sun-drenched valleys lies a silent threat, one that grows more dangerous with every passing year. Scientists call it a tectonic time bomb. The Hayward Fault runs through the East Bay area of San Francisco and right through Oakland. A new study looked into the potentially devastating impact. The Hayward Fault, long familiar to seismologists, has recently erupted into the national conversation, and not without reason. In 2024, the United States Geological Survey renewed its forecasts. There is now a 31% chance of a magnitude 6.7 or greater earthquake striking the Hayward Fault within the next 30 years, a probability that puts millions of residents, as well as critical infrastructure, at genuine risk. This isn't just a dormant threat. Each day, stress accumulates in the Earth's crust, largely unseen and unstoppable. Signs of this underground energy are everywhere if you dare to look closely. In recent months, a sequence of seven earthquakes rattled California, three registering above magnitude 3.0 shaking the California State University, East Bay Hayward campus, and sparking renewed concerns. These tremors are more than just reminders. They're signals from the earth that the region's seismic story is still being written. It runs down the East Bay where hundreds of thousands of people live, and the Hayward fault line, according to the groundbreaking USGS study, is even more dangerous than the San Andreas. This unease isn't confined to California either. From the deep forests of Washington and Oregon to the rocky shores of Northern California, a foreboding sense ripples up the Pacific Northwest. Scientists are blunt. We expect something like Japan 2011. One warns about the potential scale of earthquakes in this region. Meanwhile, as headlines focus on wildfires and droughts, the oldest threat of all rumbles beneath, the big one, is always a possibility. The last major rupture on the Hayward Fault struck back in 1868, registering at magnitude 7.0. History indicates the fault's large quakes tend to recur, on average, about every 140 years, making the passage of over a century and a half since the last major event notable. If the past is any clue, we are living on borrowed time the stakes could hardly be higher. The next quake on the Hayward Fault could rival the devastation wrought by some of history's deadliest natural disasters, and its path runs straight through America's technological, economic, and cultural heartland. Highways, bridges, hospitals, schools, water, and energy lifelines sprawl atop this hidden danger. Are California's cities ready, or is America sleepwalking toward disaster? And when, when, not if, the ground beneath the Bay Area gives way, will the region be prepared for what follows? Hayward Fault, California's most dangerous earthquake threat. When most Americans hear San Andreas Fault, images of California tearing apart in spectacular fashion come to mind. But the real threat may lie elsewhere and may be far more insidious. The Hayward Fault, running beneath the East Bay's densely populated cities, including Oakland, Berkeley, and Fremont, is considered by many experts to be one of the most dangerous faults in the United States. Its seismic history is one of protracted silence interrupted by sudden, powerful destruction, unlike some faults that release energy through frequent, smaller quakes the Hayward appears to let pressure build for generations before giving way in a single, violent rupture. Seismologists have carefully studied this pattern. On average, the fault produces major earthquakes about every 140 years. The last catastrophic rupture struck in 1868, when the region was only sparsely populated. Today, more than 2.5 million people reside above 
or near this fault. Their homes, workplaces, and schools are woven into a landscape shaped by the persistent risk from below. But the threat is much greater than a mere line on a map. The Hayward Fault marks a boundary between tectonic plates, a shear zone extending for dozens of miles, intersecting vital arteries of modern life. Freeways, railways, water, and natural gas pipelines all cross its path. The Bay Area Rapid Transit, BART system, which carries hundreds of thousands of commuters daily, traverses this fault. With so much modern infrastructure perched on or near such a seismically active zone, the scale of potential impact increases with each year of population and economic growth. The defining characteristic of the Hayward Fault isn't just its recurring power or urban proximity, but how much is now at stake. Past earthquakes left lasting marks on then tiny towns. Today, a rupture here would reverberate through the entire Bay Area and beyond. As the region's population swells and infrastructure ages, the question becomes even more urgent. When, not if, the Hayward Fault ruptures again, just how widespread will the consequences be? The Forgotten History When the Earth Last Broke Open Images of San Francisco in 1906 or the battered highways after the 1989 Loma Prieta quake still haunt the collective memory. But the Hayward Fault's own story stretches even further back into American history, carrying urgent warnings for the future. In 1868, the land that is now the East Bay looked very different. Oakland was a modest, burgeoning town. San Francisco itself was just beginning to boom. On October 21st of that year, a magnitude 7.0 earthquake shattered the region. Buildings tumbled, bridges failed, ground split, and wells erupted with unexpected water. Eyewitnesses described roads buckling and an eerie rolling ground movement. Yet by modern standards, the actual losses were relatively limited because there were few buildings to collapse and comparatively few people living in harm's way. Fast forward to today, the East Bay is a bustling metropolis skyscrapers, highways, water mains, and neighborhoods sit atop Earth that, under extreme shaking, can behave unpredictably, even liquefying in places. It has now been over 150 years since the last large rupture, a longer interval than geologists' estimated average recurrence. The evidence is plain. The fault has been accumulating stress quietly, and the next big event could happen within our lifetimes. For comparison, Scientists also looked northward to 1700, when the Cascadia subduction zone unleashed a magnitude 9 event. That quake sent tsunamis across the Pacific and reshaped coastline. Such megaquakes are rare, but the expectation among experts is clear. This region's seismic history is far from finished. What can we learn from these historical ruptures when each period of quiet eventually gives way to enormous upheaval? The lesson is inescapable. Preparedness is essential, even when the intervals between disasters lull us into complacency. The ticking time bomb, alarming signs from recent science. For decades, seismologists have looked for patterns, recurrence intervals, foreshocks, signs that a quake is imminent. Modern technology now provides new windows into the subsurface. Satellite data and advanced seismic instruments have revealed that stress accumulation on the Hayward Fault isn't as uniform or predictable as once believed. Local variations and complex interactions with other faults might tip the balance unexpectedly. Just in the past year, seven earthquakes, three exceeding magnitude 3.0, shook the East Bay. Students and staff at California State University, East Bay Hayward, felt the shaking, prompting renewed questions about whether these tremors are merely background noise or early warnings of a larger event. Current scientific consensus is that while small quakes can release some stress, they do not eliminate the risk of a major earthquake and may sometimes signal stress transfer along the fault. The USGS's 2024 update made headlines with its estimate a 31% chance for a magnitude 6.7 or greater Hayward Fault earthquake in the next three decades. This isn't an if, it's a when, and in terms of lifespans, such a window is startlingly short. 
Meanwhile, cautionary tales from across the Pacific resonate. The 2011 Japan earthquake, a magnitude 9 event, shocked the world with the scale of its destruction and the tsunami it generated. While the Hayward Fault is not capable of earthquakes of that size, the human and economic consequences of a major rupture through a densely built urban area could still be catastrophic. With millions of people and crucial infrastructure exposed, the next great California quake would have nationwide repercussions. New research also suggests that the processes controlling stress buildup and release are even more complex than once thought. Factors like groundwater movements, minute tectonic shifts nearby, and even seismic waves from distant earthquakes might all alter the odds. The Hayward Fault, therefore, could move before even careful forecasts predict, or it might hold off for years. When the quake hits, the domino effect of catastrophe, a Hayward Fault earthquake would not be just about the ground shaking. It would set off a chain reaction of disasters. Damage to water pipelines could deprive millions of residents of drinking water for days or even weeks, a scenario documented in numerous emergency simulations. Fires ignited by ruptured gas lines would be harder to contain if water lines fail or if firefighters are blocked by debris or collapsed bridges. The historical loss of San Francisco in 1906 demonstrated how secondary disasters, like fires, can vastly outstrip the quake itself in terms of destruction. Transportation would be severely affected, with BART lines, freeways, and other transit systems crossing near or over the fault. Major disruptions to the movement of people and supplies would be inevitable. Some areas might become isolated by road and rail collapses, complicating rescue and relief efforts telephone and electrical networks could go down, cutting lifelines connecting communities. Scientists warn that major ruptures on one part of the Bay Area fault system can sometimes transfer stress to adjacent faults, including the powerful San Andreas. While the exact probability of a domino effect is not precisely known, the possibility further underscores the interconnected risk along California's major quake zone. In a region with so many people, businesses, and critical infrastructure, even a single day of crisis could have impacts that ripple far beyond the Bay Area. National supply chains, financial markets, and emergency response systems could be stretched to their limits. The Hayward Fault's proximity to so much vital activity makes its next rupture a potential national emergency. Urban vulnerability, why the Bay Area is at extreme risk. Never before has so much been at risk in the San Francisco Bay Area. When the Hayward Fault last ruptured with a major quake, the local population and economy were tiny compared to today. Now, one of the nation's densest urban concentrations sprawls along and above this active fault line. Many neighborhoods are filled with old and vulnerable buildings, some still constructed of unreinforced brick. Critical hospitals, schools, and utility hubs are located alarmingly close, or even directly atop, segments of the fault. Seismic safety codes have improved dramatically in recent decades, but a substantial part of the urban fabric predates these standards. In a powerful earthquake, streets could fissure, entire blocks could shift by feet in seconds, and water and fuel mains could snap. The threat from ground failure is increased in low-lying areas built on landfill or soft sediments. Liquefaction, a process in which shaking turns soil into a near-liquid slurry, could cause buildings to tip or collapse, compounding the devastation. The 1989 Loma Prieta quake exposed this vulnerability in the Marina District, and many similar pockets exist throughout the East Bay. Nor is the risk purely local. More than 15 million people could be directly or indirectly affected if either the Hayward Fault or the even larger Cascadia subduction zone lets go. A nation on edge, the Cascadia threat and America's earthquake dilemma. While the Hayward Fault waits beneath East Bay, a vast and even more powerful threat lurks farther north, the Cascadia subduction zone. This immense fault spans from Northern California to British Columbia and is capable of unleashing magnitude 9 or greater earthquakes. Events so large 
They can restructure coastline, trigger tsunamis, and affect millions. Historical records and geological investigations confirm that a massive quake struck Cascadia in 1700, dropping river deltas by several feet and generating tsunamis detected as far away as Japan. Scientists now warn that, along the Washington, Oregon, and Northern California coasts, the next great Cascadia subduction zone earthquake could cause up to two meters, about 6.5 feet, of coastal land to subside, in some areas dropping below current sea level. The impact could include flooding, massive property loss, and displacement of whole communities. According to a leading Virginia Tech scientist, sometime in the next 200 or so years, there likely will be a magnitude 9 plus Cascadia earthquake, while the recurrence interval may seem long on the scale of individual lives. Lessons ignored. Why history's warnings still go unheeded. There is a long tradition of California learning from disaster. After the 1906 San Francisco earthquake and fire, and again after 1989's Loma Prieta event, the Bay Area and the state at large adopted stiffer building codes, retrofitting requirements, and better emergency procedures. These efforts have saved lives, but progress remains inconsistent. Tens of thousands of older homes remain unreinforced. Many important community buildings, schools, fire stations, medical centers are either unretrofitted or only partially updated. Budgets, competing priorities, and sometimes simple denial slow the necessary investments. Seismic retrofitting projects can take years to plan and complete, while earthquakes can strike in an instant. How will this story end? The unanswered question. The Hayward Fault remains quiet. For now, its accumulated stress is a silent reminder running beneath highways, neighborhoods, and Silicon Valley data centers. Every day that passes without an earthquake brings the next one closer. The science is clear and the warnings are unambiguous. A major quake, magnitude 6.7 or greater, is not just possible but likely in the next generation. The region's collective preparedness, however, is still a work in progress. From California's fault lines to the Cascadia subduction zone, the next great American disaster is not just theoretical, it is a near certainty awaiting its time. Past tragedies have spurred reform and strengthened resilience. Every disaster forced hard lessons in safety, engineering, and courage, proof that tragedy can drive innovation. The challenge now is to close the remaining gaps before another major quake turns history's warnings into reality once again. Will the next earthquake be remembered for heartbreak and defeat or for determination and unity? Is California and the nation more broadly finally heeding the lessons of the past or will the headlines of destruction and rebuilding serve as another call to action for those who survive? If you want to help your community get ready, don't wait for the shaking to begin. Start the conversation now. What part of this story surprised you most? Do you think California is truly prepared for the next big one, or is there still work to be done? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And remember to stay informed on the latest science, technology, and discoveries. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon so you never miss a moment as we uncover the world's greatest mysteries, one story at a time. Stay vigilant, stay prepared, and stay curious. California's next revelation may be right beneath your feet.